So yesterday I got something that I've been waiting for for about a week now. It's another eBay purchase. This is the Panasonic Toughbook CFC1. It's what they classify as business rugged. It's not one of the fully rugged laptops. However, it's still quite a tough little machine. These are commonly used in hospitals or um, for like jobs where they travel from place to place and have to meet with customers and stuff. Um, they're often used for point of sale stuff like that where you take them out to the job, certain engineering things and stuff like that. Uh, very very commonly seen in those sort of applications. This is about four years old, so it's a fairly recent-ish model. Um, I paid eighty dollars for it, U.S. dollars, which isn't too bad considering the specs. Um, it has a 2.4 gigahertz Core i5 and four gigs of DDR3 RAM, which I'll be upgrading to eight fairly soon. I hope. Um, I'm currently running Windows 10 on it, and I was able to get all the drivers working for everything as far as I can tell, including all of the little tablet kind of features, and yes, this is a convertible laptop, so it turns into a tablet PC. I'm um, going to start with just the basic overview of the outside. On the front we have our power slider here, which you can see is pulsating green, showing that it's in sleep mode. We have a physical wireless on-off switch which confused me at first because I couldn't figure out why the Wi-Fi wasn't working then I discovered that it has an actual hardware switch to turn it off uh, we have a headphone microphone port uh, SDHC card reader whole bunch of status indicators there's battery one some sort of eco mode um, some uh, wireless power indicator other different indicators battery two because yes this has two batteries a hard drive indicator and not sure what that is, SD card. Hard to see through the camera, it's not focusing very well. We have a PC card slot, a pen, because yes, it also has a Wacom or Wacom enabled screen, as well as a capacitive multi touch display, USB 2 port, VGA, crappy mono speaker, which I mean, it's fairly clear, but it's not loud, it gets a little bit tinny. On the back, we have our hard drive bay, which is very easy to release. You just push, push a little switch and it pops out. I'm not going to do that because it is still in sleep mode and I don't think it would like that too well. And we have dual hot swappable batteries, which I actually can take out and still have it keep running. I can take out one or the other, not both. But yeah, very small little battery packs and it has two of them. So while it's running, if one goes dead, you can switch over to the other pack by hitting a little switch on the bottom and it will just start taking power from that and you can replace it with a fully charged one. Just quite a nice little feature. And it actually only drains one pack at a time, which is also pretty cool. We have our power port, um, modem, ethernet, and a cooling vent, which does get quite warm, and two more USB ports. Let's open the device up and take a look at the nice little 12.1 inch screen, which looks to be flickering on camera but is not in real life. Um, go ahead and put in the password and we can see Windows 10 which is actually this is my only computer that I have running Windows 10. It's just an experimental uh, kind of thing. I may put Windows 8 back on it however Windows 10 doesn't seem too bad and it runs perfectly fine on here. I've disabled pretty much any security loopholes in here like Cortana so all of that is currently disabled, so it's pretty much a lot like Windows 8, really, in function. But, as you can see, it is a touchscreen device. And you can do standard kind of navigation things with it, no problem. It's not the most responsive touchscreen in the world. This is a it's 1280 by 800 display. So it's not super high resolution, but it's not bad for its size. I mean, again, it's only a 12.1 inch display. We have manual brightness control on the screen, which does work fairly well, and that actually appears to have stopped the flickering, so I'm going to leave it there. And we have a keyboard button, which is quite nice when it's in tablet mode. We have a screen orientation switching button, which is also useful. We have a physical lock switch, which brings up our menu to lock or switch user sign out. And we have a button that's marked user, which doesn't seem to do anything. I'm thinking that's to switch users, but we have that underneath the uh, little key 
buttons, so I think that's just kind of redundant. It doesn't seem to do anything in Windows 10, which isn't a problem. And there is a blanking spot for a fingerprint reader, because some of these did come with fingerprint readers. However, this model does not. There's something fairly interesting here, aside from the rather crap keyboard, which would be fine if they didn't place the delete key down at the bottom along with the insert key. And yeah, it's easy to hit those while you're typing and really screw stuff up. But, I mean, aside from that, it's not a bad keyboard. But what I want to show you is the ridiculous trackpad, which is round. Um, and I thought this was going to be a huge problem. But it really hasn't been. In practice, it's worked perfectly fine. It, it's got a good surface on it. It feels quite good. But the unique thing about it is how you scroll. You start on one of the edges, and you rotate your finger around it like a click wheel on, like, an old iPod. And... It actually works reasonably well. Go ahead and demonstrate it here, see if I can bring up something that actually scrolls. Uh, let's go to C. Windows should have a lot of files in it. And go ahead and demonstrate the scrolling. I don't know if you can see that there, it's pretty washed out, but yeah, that is working reasonably well. It's not as good as some of the multi touch kind of two-finger swipe options, definitely not as good as, say, on MacBook, how well those work, but very few trackpads are. Um, but I think it makes up with it in its tablet mode, which is very easy to switch. All you have to do is, there is a um, screen lock here, unlock it, and rotate the screen around, which locks in very firmly. And now it's a Windows 10 tablet. Touch screen works well enough for general use, and my favorite thing is the uh, pen, which you can tell is actually one of the um, RF type, where you can hover it over the screen and it registers it. You can see there, I'm not actually touching the screen, but it's got the little pointer up, and you can use that to drag and select things and move things around or draw on it or whatever. It also has the button on there, which I'm really not sure what that's for. It's like for right clicking, but if you want to right click you just click and hold and it does the same thing, so I don't know what the deal is with that. Um, but yeah, quite a nice little feature. Glad it has that. Some of these, I should point out, some of these uh, actually came with resistive touchscreens for use with gloves. However, this one, thankfully, which I didn't know when I bought it, is a capacitive one. So it's a capacitive multi-touch display. I don't know how I can actually demonstrate that, but yes, it does do the whole pinch zoom thing. I don't actually have wireless here, so I can't demonstrate internet, but I could probably bring up a browser. Don't know if it took that. Let's just click that one down there. And see if it'll load up something. Yeah, now I can... Of course it's not going to work properly. Well, it does do multi-touch, I promise. It just doesn't seem to want to do it on the Chrome browser at the moment. I know it did it in some of the other windows. Um, and if you want to rotate the screen over to like a portrait, press and hold that button, and boom, now it's in portrait mode. I'm going to rotate it twice. Back to here, which is the slightly... This way, that's the mode that you'd be normally using it in if you're going to be in portrait. Because on the back is also something very interesting. I'll show you this. It has a strap, which is kind of odd. It's got this weird rubbery hand strap, which is actually really nice. And it's got this big plastic lump in there, which looks weird, but fits in the palm of your hand just perfectly. This whole thing is designed to be super ergonomic. You slide your hand in there and it just fits, and you can hold it like that and use it um, in touchscreen mode or tablet mode, and it's quite nice, especially with the pen. You can hold it kind of like a notebook and write on it. Really, really nice little feature, and that can be easily removed if you want just by taking off these, uh, there's two screws at the top here and two at the bottom there. You just unscrew that and the strap comes off, and there's one screw that holds this little plastic thing on that just looks like a normal laptop. It doesn't even, it just has a couple little screw holes there, and there's really not anything. Uh, it doesn't make it look weird or anything when you take that off. So if you decide you don't want that, it's really easy to remove. 
Should also point out that this one came with a webcam, but the webcam is basically the worst webcam on the planet, and I would recommend against using it for anything. Um, yeah, I can demonstrate that actually. It's, uh, it's very, very poor. I'm not sure what possessed them to even bother putting the webcam on there. But unless unless it's some weird software thing, but it just seems to be that unless you have the absolute pristine lighting conditions, that it basically is totally useless. Yeah. As you can see, it's actually, it's working a lot better now. You can see my roommate's flag on the wall. Mm. But it is working, but last night when it was uh, a little bit dark in the room, it was basically totally useless. So... Yeah, and it's still extremely grainy. I don't know if you can really make that out, but it's very grainy. You got a lot of noise going on, and it's just bad. It's a really, really bad webcam, but it's usable if you wanted to make a Skype call or something. I guess it's worth having, but just barely. Um, overall, this is really, really nice little laptop. I love this thing. I'm going to be using it a lot, especially for traveling and stuff. Um, it still gets around five to six hours of battery life. It originally got around ten, but even five or six hours is plenty good enough. I do plan on rebuilding the packs eventually when they get bad enough to justify doing so, because they're a very simple pack. I think they have four 18650 cells, three or four in each one. Um, and I have plenty of spare 18650 cells laying around. I actually have nearly a hundred of them left over from the electric bike project which is actually complete, and I will be doing an update video on that soon. I just got done wiring up the headlight on it yesterday, and now that runs off of the main battery pack through a switched output, and has a little step-down regulator module that goes from 36 volts down to 4.5 for the light, and I might bump that up to 5 because I think the light will actually handle 5 volts, and that would allow me to charge phones and things off of it as well through a little external port which would be a nice little feature to have on it. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Um, you can get these on eBay for around the $80 mark. Uh, most of them are over that. The only reason this one was at that price is because it was said to have a CMOS password on it, but thankfully when I got it, it did not because I looked up later, and apparently it's nearly impossible to remove a CMOS password from a Toughbook just because they're so heavily locked down. It's not as simple as just removing the CMOS battery. Apparently that doesn't actually clear them. They have a uh, like an actual EEPROM chip on there that holds that password. So basically no matter what you do to them, it doesn't go away. Um, there's really only ways to like crack or reflash the BIOS and stuff on it. It's a real pain in the butt to do it. It is possible, but I'm not sure if I would exactly recommend buying one of these if they say they've got a CMOS password. I'd probably stay away from them just because you might get a totally useless unit. However, that being said, these battery packs go for around $120 a piece. So, you get two of them with it. <laughs> At least with this one that I bought, you got two batteries. So that would pay for it right there. Um, so, I mean, if you wanted to get one and part it out, you'd be making money either way. But, anyway, let me know what you think. Let me know if you think these are a pretty decent little laptop. I now have four tough books and absolutely love them. Um, all of the other ones I have are older Pentium 3 ones. This is the only fairly modern one that I have that can run a modern OS. But I love it. Um, so yeah, I'll be posting some videos on those other tough books fairly soon. Thanks for watching and you all have a great day.